God damn it. Getting some coffee. I never fucking drink coffee because I always have my pre-workout, so it's new to me, but I decided to put my coffee in the motherfucking Super Big Gulp cup, right? Because I don't know how many cups of coffee it takes to equal, you know, three or four scoops of killer. So probably a couple gallons. So this probably ain't even gonna work, but I forgot to bring my fucking kill it, goddammit. So I'm drinking coffee. I fucking hate coffee. Nasty as fuck. Fucking bitter and long. But whatever. You gotta do what you gotta do. We are 7 Eleven. Big J. Look at his cup. Look at my. Who's the motherfucking man now, goddammit? <laughs> What's up, guys? Me and Jay are shoulder to shoulder, goddammit. <laughs> he rented the smallest fucking car possible. I'm supposed to get good gas mileage, but with your big ass in here, I think I'm doubling my. or halving my fuel mileage. Uh, we got like 525 pounds in the front seat. We are here. We are at Stay Fit Health Clubs. And uh, we're going to go shake things up a little bit. Right? Here in Melbourne, Florida. What's your name, brother? Mike. Mike. What's up, Mike? Hey, what the fuck? Oh, fuck. fuck. God damn it. Ah! <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. You want to go get a pump? Go get a pump. Go get a fucking pull back. <laughs> there he is. You got you got an out angle. <laughs> you almost have it. And hold up, cool. You want me to show you how to out, out angle? Yes. Is that like you're, you're taking the picture? Yeah, I'm gonna show them how to out angle. So we're talking. The way I'm gonna do as you're talking, you're slowly gonna kind of just kind of slowly go like this. You're gonna get a little closer to the camera as we're talking without me knowing. Okay. And then when you take the picture, watch. Ready? You kind of go like this, and you just kind of stand a little bit closer to the camera. <laughs> And then you look bigger. You look bigger? That's how you add angle. I'm not the expert, but I'm still learning. But uh, now I know more. <laughs> now you're educated. Because the truth is, it's not. A, it's really not about how big your arms are. It's about how good you are at out angling, right? That's that's, that's, that's pretty right. much what's going around right now. All right, guys. You know your career is fading when you become the camera boy. <laughs> you know you're in trouble. What's up guys? Me and motherfucking Big J doing what we do best. And it's not training. <laughs> so we're about to uh, 
had a little pancake eating contest, and uh, we had an In-N-Out eating contest, and I think I, I think I might have won. Awesome. He, won, he won pretty good. So he, 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 he's ready for uh, his a revenge. revenge. Did you eat any breakfast or anything to, to, to screw you up today, or are you good to go? About four hours ago, but I'm ready to eat now. What did you have earlier? Uh, egg whites and oatmeal. Egg whites and oatmeal. That is the bodybuilder breakfast. Not that I'm a bodybuilder, but that's what I eat. Yes, I had a small bowl of oatmeal, and I had a small bowl of raisin bread. So, ready to rock. So what are we, what's our challenge? Pancakes? I think it's just pancakes. I think just, you know, just straight up pancakes. Right the now. only rule is if you throw up the plane, yourself. We're not throwing up. <laughs> well, we might, but not in here. Last time I threw up, we were uh, drinking, drinking beer and bench pressing 225. Yeah, that was fucking some sick shit. <laughs> so we've done, um, We've done a lot of videos together. If you guys don't know, we did a tequila drinking deadlifting Ooh, contest. God. And uh, we did a bench press beer drinking contest. And uh, that one I think has close to a million views. The tequila has like six something, I think. And we did an in and out eating contest. We fucking ate five double doubles. And uh, now we're doing a motherfucking pancake eating contest. When I was 18 years old, had a pancake eating contest at IHOP in Sacramento. And the reason being is because they had on the wall, they put the, the people up of the all time best, you know, all you can eat pancakes. And you got your name on the wall, little gold, you know, whatever. Yeah, so you want to be on the wall. Want to be on the motherfucking wall. So, uh, right. So I, I did 22 pancakes. 22. And I was first place on the wall. I'm sure I'm not even on the wall now because this was 30 years ago, whatever. Ready for those pancakes. Ready to eat. God damn it. So we, we trained. You guys saw the video. Fucking killed back. Rear delts. Worked up a little bit of an appetite. And uh, I'm currently on the keto diet. And um, I have actually altered the diet because my body came to a plateau. So I was doing absolutely no carbs except for I did real food after I trained. 40 grams. But recently I've been eating a small bowl of oatmeal for breakfast. Workout. Real food, and then the rest of the day is keto. Um, and so today is an exception because Big J's in my presence. Yeah, man. You gotta just make all kinds of exceptions. So instead of having my <laughs> usual 40 grams of real food carbs, I'm gonna have about a thousand grams of carbs and pancakes. <laughs> so, so if you guys see the the pictures from the event we're at today, and you see my motherfucking stomach sticking out, yeah, it's the goddamn pancakes. Pancakes. <laughs> Rich didn't start taking a shitload of growth all of a sudden. <laughs> a lot of pain. Everyone's been bugging, harassing to know what cycle I'm on right now, to know what I'm doing as far as cycle-wise. You so, get that a lot, don't you? Yeah, I think people are, you know, curious about it. They want the quick, they want the quick uh, solution, right? Of course, we all do. <laughs> But there is no quick solution. Yeah, there's not. There's, there's, there's not. things that can help you. Yeah. You know, help you. When I say help you, I mean 10, 15 percent, 5 percent. You know, there is no fucking you know, answer. Right. It's hard work. That's the only answer. So food is where most people feel the most. I believe. Is, right. Right. They, they just. I actually still hear people to this day say, "I just can't do it." Yeah. Can't. Can't. can't you lost? That's a, that's become too popular of a word. <laughs> is I can't. It's accept, too acceptable. Maybe eat at least six meals a day. I can't eat six meals a day. The biggest factor that everyone out there will argue, especially the people that don't do what we do, the people that are just bystanders, is you know if you're eating three meals a day, and let's say you're taking 600 milligrams of test, uh, and I say you need to eat six meals a day. Bumping that up to 1,200 milligrams of test is not going to be as good as eating six meals a day. That's exactly right. The drugs will not make up for the food, ever. The food is definitely more important. That's fuel. And you can take as, as much steroids as you want. If you're not eating, you're not going to grow. You're not going to be a 300-pound fucking bodybuilder no more. How much shit you take if you're not eating fucking 10 meals a day? Period. You train your ass off and still don't get the results if you're not putting the fuel into the body. It's like a car. It's logic. Yeah, you, you got to put a full tank of gas in to drive 300 miles. You can't put a quarter tank of gas in and expect to drive 300 miles. So, perfect example. So let's say you add a supercharger to your car. You're still not going to fucking get there without the gas. You got to put the gas in. The gas, the gas is the most important. The, the most important is to get here. That's the most important factor. 
It's not about how fat it's about getting here. You want to get here. You can inject it, right. you can supercharge it, you can nitrous, you can put a can, you can put different heads, but if you don't put the gas in that bag, that's car, it ain't gonna run. Right. In that whole situation, what's the most important factor? The gas. The, fuel. the gas. Exactly. Supercharged, you need gas. So that's, that's, that's the example. perfect fucking example. Done. So we get three pancakes to start, they give us two every time thereafter. So it's not on the new one. Bread, goddammit. By the way, Rich, we are here for the Pound Nutrition Grand Opening. Right. Instagram. Awesome. Yeah, got plenty of people there now, so we'll get done eating. We're late by the way, guys. When we get done eating, we're going to have a... Uh, and it's all Big J's fault. Losing some of them. come picking us up, rocking and rolling. I said, Big J, do you want to be on time and miss a meal? Or do you want to get the meal in? Oh, you're going to throw time. me under the bus. <laughs> He's like, I'm not missing a goddamn meal. <laughs> I will die before I miss a meal. And I, I said, did. we're on the same page. Let's go I eat. say that. So how do those 200s feel? For the rows, I need a chalk. My forearms are more than my, my back was right. being work. I mean, yeah, the back of the hand works, but, you know, if I'm trying to do all I can to hold on to the weight, I'm taking the exercise, I'm taking the muscle, I'm supposed to exercise out of the equation, right? Right. So I pride myself in not using straps. I threw them away a couple years back when I started doing work training. But, uh, yeah, I need a chalk or straps. If you're going to lift one of heavy weight and you're trying to work the actual muscle, then use straps. If you're trying to impress people in the gym, use chalk. Straps help so much when it comes to lifting the weight. It's yeah. night day difference. For sure. Yeah. For sure. If, I, if I'm doing lap holds, and let's say I, I, I'm pulling 250, I can easily go up to 300. The same reps with straps. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Oh. Big, Big J got two to start. I had three, so I'm one ahead. The thing is, is most people don't know how to correctly use straps. I've seen, I've trained clients, I've been with people, and they don't use them right, so they're actually having no benefit. They just are using them because other people use them, but they actually have never been taught how to properly use them. Because they're rolling backwards, right? They're not rolling that pose themselves. Right, and they're not, and they're not strapping them tight enough. So the, the, the test to see if you're doing it right is, yes, if you can release your hands and the straps are holding the weight, you're doing it right. right. And I guarantee you... Because you roll it against, like that, and then you put pressure and the strap doesn't want to go. Right. So you're not using any grip strength, any form strength. I guarantee you, anyone, most 90% of people out there, if you try that, the weight's going to fall because you're not, you're not using the straps right. It's a lot more difficult than it seems to actually get those locked in right. And I haven't used straps in 10 years, and the reason being is because, to me, grip strength is incredibly important. You know, grip strength is... Very important. I mean, that's we're talking about a life and death situation. Yeah, you know, exactly. grip strength. Get into real world situations. Right. Grip strength is incredibly important in many aspects of life. You don't cut yours up. You just use it like, uh, like you're cutting a piece of cake or something. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, like yeah, you yeah. Cut it off. You see yeah. how I'm doing this? Uh huh. You know who taught me how to do this? Who? I just learned it while I was watching it because CT Fletcher and I, you know, we've done tons of videos. Uh -huh. And I saw him cut it up like this. I said, why are you doing that? It's going to cool them off. He said, I don't care how hot or cold they are, Big J. I just want the syrup to get to all of them. I said, man, that's a good idea. So it's cooling it off and you get syrup in everybody. After you cut them like that, you put it like a little moat. I'm all about the syrup. So why are you on a keto diet? Oh. I was in Germany for FIBO, and okay. me and Jens um, were fucking around working on the gym and shit. So we started talking about, uh, you know, fighting and this and that. And so he said, oh, why don't we go, let's go in the ring. I'm like, fuck around, you know? And I'm like, okay, let's do it. So I got a breath before you even get to the ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we started like sparring and messing around, and, and uh, his girlfriend did some footage, you know? And it's crazy because I, I felt good. Like, I felt like I, it's crazy because what I thought was happening, when I looked at the footage, it was, like, was wow. night and day difference. Yeah. We all know that, you know, the more weight you have on your body, you know, the more it hinders you in every aspect of life. But other than but why do, heavy weight, why do we want to keep getting bigger? We're obsessed with being the biggest, baddest motherfucker. So here's the thing. I'll tell you my thing. I love being as big as I can, but still being as functional as I can. Sure. Be able to move good and just have a combination of both. You know, be athletic. Let me draw that line. For me, it's about it's about 
260, 250, you know, and recently I, I decided I want to go to 240, so I'm even, you know, more. I've lost, I've lost over 40 pounds yeah. in um, the last four and a half weeks. What do you weigh now? Right this minute, I'm like 274. Okay. 270, yeah. So we weigh about the same. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're a lot bigger than I am, but we weigh close to the same. Yeah, I don't know though, you know, sometimes when you lean out, it's illusion. Okay. Okay. As things pop and, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you know. Well, to be leaner, it you know, gets rid of the body fat at the joints. Uh, you know, the muscles pop out more, you get yeah. rid of the water in the skin, no. the intramuscular fat, so you do look better. Right. But you still want to be bigger in your clothes. Here's the test, is that, you know, you've been doing martial arts your whole life. You're pretty familiar, but when you're our size, if you end up on your back, how quick are you going to be back up on your feet? Parabellum basically means, you know, you hope for peace, but you prepare for war. So you've always got to be, like you're saying, you got to train for those positions that are compromising that you don't want to be in, that you know how to get out of. And again, I'm not trying to tell people that you need to know how to fight. You need to know how to defend yourself, but you need to know how to defend yourself proficiently. All right, guys, I got uh, eight and a half pancakes. Big J's about to demolish seven and a half. Still working on it. And uh, pro I'm, I'm, I can eat more, man. You know, don't fucking believe me, I can eat more. But Mike has had a limo sitting outside for us for about 40 minutes and is full with people that are supposed to, that we're all going to the event in the limo. So it's pretty, it's pretty rude of us to sit here and fucking eat pancakes all day when we're supposed to be at this event and there's people waiting for us <laughs> and there's people inside the fucking limo. So uh, we're not that fucked up. We're close, but we're not that fucked up. We could probably do several more. But you're right, brother. No, I, 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 yeah, I could get I could easily get, get at least at least twelve. Yeah. Easily. I mean I'm not full at all, but yeah. we gotta get through it, man.